Don't you think this little crab is the coolest? Unfortunately, it did not love me as much as I loved it, so I wanted to see if I could paint it in gouache. Basically, my plan for this video is to explain my thinking behind what I'm doing and let you see the process roll out, because that's really going to be the best teacher. So I hope it helps. The colors I'm using are from Da Vinci Paint Co. and they are Ultramarine Blue, Red Rose, Yellow Light, and Titanium White. I try to stick to just three or four colors because I'm working on my color mixing and it actually helps to simplify things for you when you want to create an easy harmony in your painting. I usually mix my paints ahead of time so that I don't really have to worry about it during the painting and it takes about 10 minutes. At first I started with the gray wash. I was working from a couple different reference pictures online and I was still trying to figure out if I needed to gray out the crab as much just to start off. It's always a good idea to lay down some kind of base just in case you have open spots between what you're painting on top. So that's what I ended up doing. And they're called ghost crabs because they're so light. So I want to make sure that I don't make it super dark. I just want to get the oranges and grays slapped on there so that I can start to build up depth. I decided I wanted to start painting more again, just because it makes me so much happier. And if you're watching this, I hope you can paint along with me or just enjoy watching it all come together. If you want to start painting with gouache, I'm going to have a video about getting started added to the end of this video and in the description. I try to make it super easy and simple so that it's not overwhelming. And I'd also say I'm kind of a minimalist painter. So I try to stick to the very basic, bare minimum of what you need to get some good paintings. Painting in realism is a great way to learn more about something. You notice all these things you wouldn't have noticed otherwise, and you start asking questions like, hey, what's up with the funky eyes on this crab? And you find out that they're on stalks, and they can swivel around and have 360 degree vision, which is pretty cool. These little babies are pretty cool in general. They're usually in like tropical or subtropical areas, but they're super important to beach ecosystems because they can be predators and prey for different animals and so they're like a part of different food chains and they can also tell you how healthy a beach is by whether they're there or not. But I think that's most crabs.
Here I'm starting to add shadows. When I took my main reference pic, the sun was really high in the sky, so the only shadows are going to be directly underneath it. And I totally forgot to mix my dark shadowy gray, so I had to mix it then. Another fun fact about ghost crabs is that they're kind of like partially land crabs, so they actually need to breathe air through their gills and they have air bags to hold their breath, but they do have to go back in the water obviously, so if they spend too much time underwater they can drown, which I thought was a little unexpected. I thought crabs were pretty secure in the drowning department, but I guess not. I know it seems really fast the way I'm putting things together, but really this crab took me like an hour and a half to get to where I was happy with it. You have to take a lot of breaks with gouache because it helps you to have a dry layer to work on on top when you're not trying to get like a soft color blend. And it helps freshen your eyes because if you're just sitting there staring at it for too long, you're going to start missing details. Here I'm adding dark lines, but almost nothing has those thick dark lines, so you always want to make sure you go back and fade them out and thin them out to make them look more realistic. And that's why I like gouache, because I, I can make some mistakes and it lets me go back and refine as much as I want to, which is preferable over something like acrylic, where you usually need to add stuff to it to keep it wet like that. And I'm working on a video that helps you choose the art medium that works for you, whether it's oil, acrylic, gouache, watercolor, so just make sure to stay tuned for that. So what I'm doing here is just making layers, layers, layers. I just build it up and build it up until it looks to where I like it. And I feel like this is more like a conservative approach when it comes to gouache, because usually I see a lot of artists like get really thick to layer on, and so you really don't see a lot underneath. But I think I'm kind of go between like a watercolor to gouache technique, where it's not really thick at all. I like to do really thin layers. So if you're trying to save paint, 
it works really well for you. So the crabs obviously are trying to camouflage in the sand, and you can see from the picture that they do it pretty well. It's a different kind of camouflage than you normally hear about, and it's much slower. It can take at least a month to match new sand at a new beach, but they can also change their lightness and darkness during the day. Which kind of sounds strange, but I guess if it works, it works. I'm just trying to keep the camo similar enough to work with this, but I still want to have the crabs stand out in the picture, so I made it a little more colorful and saturated than the sand around it. For the little spiky hairs, I wanted to make sure I had a dark enough base for them. Otherwise the highlights are just not going to stand up enough and it's going to look really muddy and dark. And you're just going to keep adding to it and working it and working it. It's not going to work. So just make sure you have a darker base when you're adding your highlights. And these little spikes are usually for sensing touch or movement. So you want to make sure they look really fine.
The final details are the most important, and those last teeny tiny details are like the most satisfying to paint. I use barely diluted pure white for the brightest highlights, like just enough to get the brush to move smoothly on the paper, because I want that pigment as bright as possible. This is your reminder that before you add those last highlights, you want to make sure your painting is totally dry so there's as little mixing as possible. Sometimes you gotta walk away and come back a couple times to make sure you're happy with your work. At this point, I could tell she was getting so close. My system that I work off of is usually that I start with the base of like the lightest colors and the mid-tones, which are like not too light or not too dark colors. Then I add the shadows and the highlights as much as I need to to make it look to where I'm happy with it. And that system usually does not do me wrong. When I stick to it, it's easier to just focus on having fun with the painting part instead of worrying about having messed up my colors beforehand. It's kind of weird, but when I'm painting, I like to ask myself, does it make me smile? And yes, look at that little face. I hope it made you smile too.